and welcome back. Sure you're wondering why I've got these hot pink sunglasses on top of my head. Well, I'm thinking warm and summery thoughts because for the next two weeks, you're gonna learn how to make your very own seascape. This video is part one of two, where we're gonna talk about the different parts of the landscape, which is something that we've learned about before, and how those can also be applied to a seascape. The main difference between a landscape and a seascape is, well, one's got a lot of land, and the other one's got, well, the sea, the ocean, lots of beach pictures. I also like to think of this project as drawing places that Miss Wegman could go on vacation. It's one of my favorite projects. But anyway, what are we waiting for? Let's start drawing. Okay, I have my drawing materials ready. I have my piece of paper to draw on, pencils to draw with, and an eraser, just in case there's anything I might need to erase. Before I start drawing, I just want to bring this picture of a landscape over really quick just to go over some of the parts of a landscape and then when we draw the seascape, I can show you how they're going to relate. So remember, whenever you're drawing, you have your horizon line that goes along the back. This separates the sky from the land, but in the case of our seascape, it's going to separate our sky from our ocean. We also have our vanishing point. Our vanishing point is going to be a little different in our seascape. Our vanishing point is actually going to be our sun, which is going to be a lot larger than this tiny little point, but as everything gets closer to our sunset, it's going to start to get smaller. And then we also have the three parts of a landscape or a seascape, which are the foreground, which is the area in the front where everything is the largest, the middle ground, where everything's kind of medium sized and the background where things are the smallest because they are the farthest away. So how can we apply those different parts to a seascape? Pretty easily, actually. So um, I'm actually going to have my horizon line. I'm going to find the middle of my paper, which would be around here. But because I'm going to need a little bit of room for an ocean, I'm going to move that up a little bit. And I'm going to have my horizon line come across my paper like this. So I have plenty of room for a sky and a sunset, but I'm not taking away too much space from down here. Do not use a ruler to do your horizon line. There are no such things as perfectly straight horizon lines. In fact, the reason that they look so straight is just because they're so far away from us. If you look at the ocean up close, is the ocean perfectly straight and flat on top? No, there's waves and it's constantly moving, but it's just the way that it appears because it's so far away. I'm also going to add a little bit of beach in the front. Now, sometimes in a seascape, you might see a line drawn across here and it would be as simple as sky, sea, sand. But if we draw it that way, it's actually gonna make our picture look a little flat. So we're gonna use a diagonal line to create our beach. I'm gonna go up here a little bit below my horizon line and I'm gonna draw a diagonal line that makes its way down to just above my bottom left corner of my paper. So this whole area here will be my beach. I'll have my water and my sky. And now it's time to start adding some objects that I can use to create those different spaces, my foreground, my middle ground, and my background. For my foreground, I'm actually going to add a palm tree. I'm gonna put that here. And an easy way to draw palm trees is actually start from the bottom and work your way up like this. You can see here in my foreground, I've got a palm tree that's the closest object to me. So I had to add a cute little crab, a couple seashells, I might add one more little conch looking shell shape here. And these are just some little extra things, but I don't wanna fill up my sand too much because if you decide to paint or color your sand, you're not going to want your sand completely covered in objects like beach chairs and beach towels, okay? This isn't quite like down the Jersey Shore. We wanna keep our sands kind of empty, like an empty, deserted beach, which would be so amazing to be at right now. But anyway, back to our seascape drawing. All right, so my foreground is my beach. My middle ground is basically just going to be my ocean. And the only thing that I'm really gonna mark here is lightly with my pencil, I'm gonna create some little wavy lines that kind of go across my shoreline. And actually, I might even very lightly go over my shoreline that I've drawn with my pencil just to lighten it up a little bit. And this is kind of like that little bit of foam that you get 
when the um, when the water hits the beach and kind of creates little bits of waves. But the rest of everything in here is going to be blue because I have to give it the illusion that this is like, you know, the shoreline right here. But as it goes further and further back, the ocean is just never ending and goes right on out to my horizon line. And I accidentally made a little mistake right here. Let's erase that. All right, I'm also going to add my sun, which is going to be in the process of setting. When we color in our second video, part two, we're going to color this like a sunset sky. But I do wanna add one more thing into my picture to give more of a background, and that's going to be a boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna erase a little piece back here of my horizon line. And I'm gonna draw two little shapes like parentheses, kind of a little wavy-ish line, and that's where my boat is floating, because remember, boats don't float right on top of the horizon, they're actually partially in the water. So you wanna create that illusion. Here's my boat. I'm gonna make kind of a little, sorry, like Captain Jack Sparrow and Pirates kind of boat with a basic little mast, little sails, maybe a little flag on top. So that little guy is back there. You could even make it smaller to make it seem even further away. And there you go. That's my basic drawing for my landscape. And my next major step would be to start adding color. And for that, you guys can go and check out video number two. Enjoy, have fun. Remember, you can always pause the video while you're watching this to kind of help you out. You can rewind and you can always message me with questions. Have fun. Oh,